so hello everyone so today we are going to start with pressure measurement we will understand in this presentation what are the uh, main types of pressure measuring devices that are used in the industry in industries like power oil and gas and a process industry other process industries and the principle basic principle of operation and some examples at the end so let's move ahead pressure measurement is a vital part of industrial operations like other industrial parameter measurements like temperature etc pressure is first of all used in other measurement systems like flow level speed and it is one of the best and quick indication of work done by pumps and compressors etc we need to understand that why pressure is a vital uh, parameter to be measured because the pressure these uh, pressure in measurements are work as inputs to the control systems and the control systems in most of the process plants are uh, really important for the protection systems to work uh, properly and hence to avoid any mishaps or any incidents so the next point is moving on the uh, in pressure measurement we generally have a reference point so the first reference point is absolute zero that a condition exists in perfect vacuum and any pressure that is measured with reference to absolute zero is absolute pressure the other reference point is the atmospheric pressure that we all know and this value changes according to altitude and weather conditions and the pressure that is measured above this atmospheric pressure is known as the gauge pressure so now we will move on to the types of pressure measurement devices we have broadly classified this into two categories one is mechanical pressure measurement and other is electronic pressure measurement so the mechanical pressure measurement are mostly the types of Gordon gauge diaphragm sensor bellow gauge manometer so these are basically the sensors and the electronic pressure me measurement uh, includes the other transducer systems like strain gauge piezoelectric transducer piezoresistive transducer which convert one form of energy to an electrical form of energy so we will go through all these types in the subsequent slides and now the factors that we need to keep in mind while selecting a pressure sensor uh, for a process uh, application are the viscosity of the fluid of application it is very very important because the on basis of the type of the fluid in the application the selection of the pressure measurement device may change and the range of pressure obviously and the accuracy desired because the more accurate the instrument the cost factor is also come, uh, come into play so that is also required and the temperature etc of the environment of the fluid basically so we start with mechanical pressure measurement principle of operation now how do mechanical pressure sensors work is a very simple principle it just translates a pressure into physical motion and that is proportional to the measure applied the mechanical motion produces either a dial indication like in cases of gauges or a standard electronic signal in case of transmitters so the uh, most commonly used uh, type of mechanical pressure measurement sensor is a border tube as you can see in this figure there is a circular shaped tube okay and there is this pressure point from where the pressure is applied so the tip of the tube moves as the pressure is applied from this point and this motion displacement is then converted into a pointer arrangement through this pinion and sector gear and the pointer rotates on a scale that is calibrated according to the movement of the burden tube the burden tube gauges are the most commonly used measuring devices as i have already mentioned in any process point the points to remember are that it is since it is the most commonly used mechanism it is also inexpensive it has a wide operating range you can find burden tube gauges for different ranges and they are gauges as usual are mostly for indication purpose only so we will move on to the next then next point is the diaphragms so how do diaphragms work diaphragm as we all know in our 
common day to day language is a flexible membrane or disk sort of a device which is either flat or with concentric corrugation, corrugated sheets. So, when a pressure is applied, they, uh, it causes the diaphragm to flex. Okay, and then this is translated to a pointer or any switching application where the pressure causes a displacement that is proportional and which is applied to a set of switch contacts. So now you see in this arrangement the pressure is applied from here, the membrane def uh, deflects and then this motion is connected either on a pointer or it is used for a switch application points to remember here suitable to measure gauge pressure absolute pressure differential pressure it has a high operating range high repeatability and can be used for aggressive materials so that is important here other one is bellows so what are bellows bellows are another elastic element type of pressure sensor that operate on the same principle as the diaphragm sensors why because when we apply pressure the bellow expands so once this exam expands the movement is then translated into either a gauge or into a, a switch as we have discussed previously. So one end of the bellow is fixed and the other end is allowed to move as you understand from this arrangement in response to the pressure from the side. Okay, so the points to remember here are it is also suitable for absolute and differential pressures, cannot measure high pressure and has to be replaced when damaged. So this, since there are multiple layers of uh, bellows, so th and these folds are uh, important for to allow the expansion and the displacement movement. But when, if any of the folds get any damage, then this entire system needs to be re replaced and it cannot be repaired like that. Next comes the YouTube magnetic. So, although there are different types of manometers like inclined tube manometer as well, so but we will cover only the YouTube manometer, which is the basic first basic type of manometer. So, what is a manometer? How does a manometer work? It works on the principle of hydrostatic equilibrium and it's used to measure static pressure, okay, exerted by still liquid or gas, not moving or flowing. That is important to understand. Manometer is an U shaped tube filled with an incompressible fluid mostly mercury or water you see so this is a tube arrangement where we have one liquid inside either mercury or water because in this case we need to know the density of the liquid so in case of mercury or water we know the density of the water and then when the unknown pressure is applied in lamp one the level rises in the lamp two okay so you see this movement the difference in the levels, that is H, is the differential pressure. You see the equation here, H is equal to P, this is the P, minus P0 into, this is density and this is G. Okay, manometers are primarily used in labs for pressure instrument calibrations. Because as, it, as we have already mentioned, it is used to measure static pressure and not flowing. Okay, so in our process plants, generally we have a flowing pressure, flowing liquid. So we have to measure the dynamic pressure. But this is mostly used for pressure instrument calibrations. So now we will move on to the next classification, electronic pressure measurement. Now what is the principle of operation we see? Most electronic pressure sensors uses various elements as the primary pressure detector which then is transferred from mechanical to proportional electronic signal as we have discussed before so the electronic pressure devices have faster response and are more accurate due to very less movement required in the elastic elements they are free from drift friction and hysteresis common to bellows diaphragms and modern elements that require larger movement for mechanical indication of pressure like we have discussed before the pointer arrangements uh, uh, give the indication on the scale of the gauge so that requires a mechanical movement which is considerable amount as compared to the electronic pressure devices so pressure transmitters are the most commonly used instruments in any industry and different transmitters use one or other methods of 
pressure measurement as per the principles that will be discussed later. Okay, so first comes the strain gauge pressure sensor. A strain gauge is a sensor whose resistance varies with applied pressure. The strain gauge causes a mechanical motion into an electrical signal by using a Wheatstone bridge arrangement. So you must have studied a Wheatstone bridge arrangement where a wire length is changed by tension or compression through pressure, hence changing the electrical resistance and a proportional electrical signal. So you see this is the Wheatstone bridge arrangement okay, and this element is the strain gauge element. This resistance where the strain gauge when applied pressure will cause the resistance of the strain gauge to change because it will there will be mechanical motion due to this diaphragm and then the resistance of this changes so once the resistance changes of the western bridge the voltage is then measured which will be proportional to the change in pressure the complete measuring device includes a sensing element okay which can be a diaphragm bellow or body tube a strain gauge attached to the element and a stable power source and a readout device so that's the entire arrangement so moving on to this piezoelectric pressure sensor so what exactly is a piezoelectric material we know that there are certain materials which when are subject to pressure will generate a voltage across the element this voltage can be measured as proportionality applied pressure okay so piezoelectric sensors uh, exploit this effect and are widely used in industrial applications. So you see this is how uh, this is a basic schematic for the kind of arrangement that will be required. So there is a pressure sensing diaphragm and there is this piezoelectric material kept here on the base and it is connected to an electrical circuit. So when the pressure is applied this diaphragm causes pressure on this piezoelectric sensor and the corresponding voltage is generated. Okay, so now they will move on to capacitive pressure sensor. The capacitive pressure sensor operates on the principle that if the sensing diaphragm between two capacitive plates is deformed by a differential pressure, an imbalance of capacitance will occur between itself and the two plates. Okay, so you see here there is this rigid plate, there is this sensing diaphragm. Okay, and here is the port for the pressure application. Right. So this imbalance is detected in a capacitance split circuit and converted to output current of 4 to 40 milliamps. Typically, one electrode is the pressure sensitive diaphragm on the other side, like here in this arrangement that we have shown. So now we will move on to the last phase of our presentation where we are showing the industrial pressure measurement devices. We will talk about the three most commonly used pressure measurement devices. First, the pressure gauges that we have discussed are the bottom tube or the diaphragm types. So the pressure gauge, what is a pressure gauge? It is used as an indicator, a physical indication of the pressure of a liquid or gas in any vessel or pipeline at the field location in a process industry. So we need to understand that pressure gauges are mostly for field indications, for field rounds okay at the location not from the control room so most pressure gauges generally use voltage arrangement while choosing a pressure gauge points to a number of range of pressure in a dynamic environment it is important to consider the pulses and surges because in a dynamic pressure measurement there could be sudden spikes okay so uh, accuracy desired process media and the process connection size and mounting styles next are the pressure switches most pressure switches use this diaphragm, bellow or piston as a sensing element to generate a force which is compared to that of a pre-compressed range spring and actuates that is initiates one or more switch contacts to initiate a control action. So what exactly a switch uh, first we need to understand. A switch is one where there is a preset uh, setting with which we compare the process uh, pressure and then we initiate this switching action okay so the pre-compressed range spring is the my setup set point my preset pressure 
and the process pressure is uh, sensed by the diaphragm below or piston and when it is compared to the preset uh, set point and then it initiates a control action in the switches so every switch has a NONC contacts and then it can be used further based on the requirement of the control system okay while choosing a pressure switch points to remember are how often the switch will be activated okay because electromechanical switches are subject to a very frequent switching of uh, the contacts could lead to easy failure or early failures switch point and operating pressure range pressure applied should not exceed the maximum this is very important obviously the range of uh, pressure that the switch is designed to measure the pressure applied should not exceed the, the compatibility of the wetted parts of switch and process media so then we come to pressure transmitters so pressure transmitters are devices that convert low level electrical outputs from pressure sensing elements to higher level signals that can be transmitted over a long distance for further processing and using media systems okay first what are pressure transmitters pressure transmitters what do they do they sense the pressure in the field and then the signal is converted into an electrical signal and which is then transmitted over long distance to the control room why long distance because from the field it could travel maybe a kilometer few kilometers to reach the main control room of the process plant from where the control system like DCS or PLC would use this pressure transmitter signal to initiate the control actions okay, in the control systems while choosing a pressure transmitter points to remember are the type of pressure transmitter okay, the gauge absolute differential it is important for selection of the transmitter the range of pressure as usual is obviously important because different transmitters will have different range of pressures accuracy desire and the operating environment the process medium temperature vibration etc is also important so with that we come to the end of our presentation thank you very much any questions regarding pressure measurement can be put in the comment box below we will be more than happy to answer them thank you thanks a lot